All right, guys, we are about to start the Ursa Brawl. This is brought to you by Bruno of Ursa TV. Uh, to just say a little bit about him, he's uh, become a member of the community and uh, mostly in StarCraft 2, but he's venturing here into some Brood War. Uh, he came to me and wanted to host uh, a fun show match series with some local players. Uh, that would be NA, basically, players, uh, for you guys to see. And he's sponsored this all. Uh, he's paying out all the prize pool and everything. It's a great prize pool. Uh, and we have four of the very best players. Gypsy versus Bow in a best of five. Then we're going to have Dragon versus Cross in best of five. And then a fun four-man FFA with money on the line. Uh, so that's all fantastic. Uh, you know, it, Bruno has, like, some really cool things that he's thinking about uh, doing in the future, like hosting more events. Uh, he lives in Ottawa in Canada, which is not that far from me. And uh, he's thinking about doing some live events as well. So these things may help to parlay into there. So anyways, uh, tell your friends, let everyone know that this is what we're doing here now. Uh, and it should be a great match. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. I'm going to uh, create the first game here. This is going to be very, very fun. And I'm really excited uh, for this for this first match, honestly. This is the best Terran and best Protoss in North America going at it. So, should be excellent. And I think... All right, just hosting it up. We're going to start on Citadel as our first map. Oh, whoops. And here we go, guys. is all being played live right now these players were great enough to uh give their evenings to us and here we go guys in the top right we have the best protoss player in north america none other than boa and in the bottom right we have the best terran player outside of asia obviously north america is within there so the top of the top it's Gypsy. This is going to be a great match. I'm actually really, really, really excited about this match. Both the matches are good, but obviously I'm a Terran player. So that's something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to being able to get Gypsy to play here. Uh, and specifically against Boa, someone that is a Terran murderer. He is an absolute god of killing Terran. I actually set both these matches purposefully how they are. Uh, cause the other match is actually Dragon, who's like, ex he's good at everything, but he's extremely good at Zerg versus Pro or Protoss versus Zerg. And he's playing against Crossy, who's a, a really just uh, the best Zerg outside of Asia right now. Uh, so just really, really good match setups, I think. A big, uh, shout out to Bruno for letting me handle that and, uh, choose these players cause this is going to be very entertaining. Best of five. They both had map vetoes. Uh, just to mention the vetoes, we're basically doing the ladder pool. I, I banned Fighting Spirit myself. Uh, hate that map. I forgot that it was in the map pool even. Uh, but Gypsy has vetoed Troy. And uh, Boa has vetoed uh, Dark Origin, actually. Uh, so Neo Dark Origin being vetoed is like kind of funny to me because I do think it's a very good map for Protoss versus Terran. But, uh, you know, Boa, you know, I think he's afraid of Gypsy getting into a standard game there because it's a very small map. So if Terran survives to three bases and isn't far behind, uh, it can actually become a pretty reasonable map for Terran to win on. So anyways, enough talk about that. Those are the vetoed maps. We're on Citadel here. And as uh, this game concludes, the loser gets the map choice. Of course, first to three wins will take it down. So right now... Gypsy looks to be doing a factory expansion, very standard SCV scout timing. And in fact, he is going to be able to scout Boa first here. 
Boa not scouting as of yet. He's doing a very late scout. This is probably just a really, really fast Nexus. You know, it really matters quite a bit when you send that probe out for how many minerals you want to get, which is why it can be so infuriating when a Protoss player comes across the map and steals your gas. Because it's like, damn, man, you scouted early. Everything else you have should be late now. But in this case, Boa is maximizing his mineral count. He started up the range upgrade. Uh, we have a Dragoon on the way, no doubt. And of course, Gypsy will get out of here in time. He's just checking and making sure nothing else is popping out here. Uh, obviously, if you had a Zealot on the way, it should be made before the core. But just him knowing, like looking at this now, hold on, hold on. Now, when the probe makes it this early, they normally cancel range, right? If it's before three minutes and like 20-ish seconds, almost always it's a range cancel. Gypsy could not go back in to see it. And in fact, Boa had a little bit of extra minerals there. So it's like this really tight little timing uh, where he made sure his Dragoon was coming out and he could deny that scout. Kind of borderline there. And he actually starts range again right away. So that's going to be a little bit more safe. But Gypsy over here, as you can see, he's going to get his own command center. And the one thing, if he read this correctly, that range got canceled, he can basically skip his bunker. And that is a huge difference for Terran. Every little thing when you start getting up to this level uh, becomes quite a big difference. Now, the Vulture coming out, going to go across the map and scout. And in fact, he gets in front of this Dragoon. Of course, a secondary Dragoon is already sitting in this choke. So not expecting uh, to be able to get in, but he does catch that scout probe that was going back. So very good uh, catch by this Vulture. Add-on is still coming and we'll see what tech chips he wants to go for next. But do notice, no bunker. And you can only do this if you read correctly that they canceled range. He saw range, he left, Nexus started, it was borderline. He decided that range was canceled, he was right. So fantastic opener here for Gypsy. Not that Boas is bad, Boas is fine. Nothing wrong with Boas opener. It's just Gypsy has basically reacted to it optimally. Now Robo is on the way as well as second gate. Very likely, Boa will go two gate observer. Uh, you know, just a very standard, careful opener. Uh, probably into a third base, probably into Reaver, but he might go Reaver before into the third base. Uh, it could be either one. Now, Gypsy, this is pretty standard right now. He's going for a four to five. It, it's like a late fifth Marine, but a five Marine, one siege tank push with mines. He'll, yeah, his mines just finished up here. <coughs> and he'll probably, yeah, throw down an armory next. So, what he's doing is he's just poking because he knows that range is late. Uh, but I think range actually finished already. So Boa is going to be completely fine here. Now, you should lay one mine before you go up. So you have a retreat mine in case everything goes wrong. He actually runs up and lays his first mine right on top of them. But Boa's micro really, really good here. As you can see, one mine it actually gets popped. Oh, my God. Really, really good. Only loses one Dragoon so far. Got to target that mine. Okay, target's the mine. Target the mine. Target the mine. Oh, target the mine. No! Tries to drag it into Gypsy, and he actually does end up getting one Marine with it. But definitely a little tiny bit of Miss Micro. So it looks like uh, Boa will have ended up losing three Dragoons here. And Gypsy's still here, but I don't think he should be. I think it's really time to get out of here. This is, this is overstaying your welcome. But this was a beautiful poke from Gypsy, truly. This was a really great poke. Little things like this reverberate through the early game. The fact that he's able to get up there and he basically traded four of his Marines and really the Marines don't matter at all at this point. You don't even have a bunker to put them in. So this is a garbage unit. But he traded like a little bit of Sea Chank health and maybe two Vultures and got like three Dragoons. Plus he saw what was going on for the most part. No second gas, anything like that. So that gets Gypsy into a very decent position here. Uh, taking a look, he has his armory up and upgrading. We have the eBay on the way. And yeah, I mean, that's it's all really fantastic. This is going to be siege mode coming up. And I think what we'll see is Gypsy just add three more factories. This is very... Oh, he actually goes for the bunker. So this is, this is heavy safety. Uh, the bunker, the whole thing is it, not that it's going to damage your opponent. You only have one Marine here and I would seriously doubt yeah he's floating the barracks so he's not gonna make more but it tanks a huge amount of damage it really gets in the way if your opponent tries to do some sort of crazy strong attack onto you so loads that up playing very very safe i think he likes his opening so much he's just gonna turtle a little bit so academy on the way 
Missile turret down here so that there can be no fancy micro with Reavers. Missile turret up here to just block this side of the natural. One here. And he also has some Goliaths out. And in fact, this is probably a Goliath as well. Looking up at Boa's base. Okay, so he did get that third Nexus up. And there's that Reaver tech I was talking about. Utilizing that as part of the wall. Uh, he doesn't know if Gypsy's going to go for fast scan or anything, but... Gypsy's going for a very normal scan timing, so he won't know 100% this is on the way, but this is how Boa plays. And in fact, most good Protosses play with this same build in a decent percentage of games. This is basically the most flexible Protoss opener that there is. You know, going gateway, Goon Expand into two Gate Observer, into third base, into Reaver, and then you go up to four to six gates in that range. And it's kind of up to you exactly how many you want. Here we see Boa going for five. So going to be macroing out strongly. Coming across with his Reaver. And Gypsy is adding those additional factories now. So this is an important moment in the game as well. The Observer coming up to see what's what. Gypsy moving in front of his natural. This is a pretty good position to start pushing out with. Yeah, he's not going to quite be able to get that. Puts a little bit of hull damage on. The Reavers do deal a bit of damage there, though, uh, to the Siege Tank, to the turret and SCV as well. Looks like Boa getting ready right now for a fourth base. You know, he doesn't have full intel, but you assume right now that your opponent is probably going for five factories, which is exactly what Gypsy's doing. Now, Boa generally, to counter this will go heavy speed lots, right? He'll get his speed shuttle with Reavers. He'll have a decent amount of Dragoons, but he likes to really load in the speed Zealots. And I, you see four popping out here. They don't have speed yet, but his Citadel is... Oh, it's up here. Okay, sorry. I didn't see that behind the little scoreboard thing up there. So he does have that Citadel. I'm sure legs are on the way. The one thing, because here's the thing. All of us uh, in North America have played each other like a lot of times. So we know each other's styles pretty darn well. And so Gypsy will know this. Right now, he's laying mines, adding missile turrets because he knows there could be a shuttle backstab. Just a couple speed shuttles like flying into some harass. So that's really well placed. But the one thing I know very well about Boa in this exact situation is he'll mass up the speed lots heavily. So if you want to push with the five factory, what you should do is at the beginning of your push, see, he's got enough tanks right now. This is nine tanks. You can go to nine to 12 right in that range. Uh, but what he should do is rally pure vulture. Some people go vultures out of three and tanks out of two as far as the factory production goes. But if you're playing against Boa, it is my opinion that you need to go pure vulture rally because he's so heavy on those zealots. Now, the Reavers actually, they end up being picked off. That's kind of a big moment. But they do get a few tanks. They do deal some damage. Does Boa have enough to break this push when it comes? Well, right now, yes. But you can hit critical mass with this, perhaps, if you go pure vulture from here. Now, notice Gypsy does have a little bit of a bank. He's going to start another command center pretty soon here. No doubt about that. He sees the speed zealots coming in. He's coming back to a more turtled position. Trying to lay some mines, but the zealots getting on top right away. Out bombs a bunch of zealots. He's getting on top of the tanks. This is pretty much a good game. That is a terrible position for Gypsy. Boa crushing this first push is super, super strong. And he has his fourth base up with the probes going over right now. So Boa's in a position that like very few people in the entire world would be able to win against him here. I would put money on Boa right now against like Rush. <laughs> Maybe Rush would win, but I'd be like, no, I think it's, it's fair money for uh, Boa to win from here for sure. Well, obviously, as I'm talking about this, uh, Boa is breaking in and looks like he should be able to kill him off. Chi-Gi is called, and that is a 1-0 to zero for Boa. All right. So an excellent uh, first game there from Boa. Like I said, he goes very heavy speed lots. Uh, you got to keep in, in uh, mind the, the styles these guys play. Now, just going to go ahead and get a uh, map pick here from Gypsy. Let me see where he's at. Oh, 
Hope you guys are enjoying. This is the Ursa Brawl. All right, so we're going to be going on to Radeon for map number two. And here we go. All right, here we go, guys. In the top right, it's Gypsy. And in the bottom right, Boa. All right. Uh, Gypsy chose Radeon, which I do find kind of interesting uh, because a lot of Terran players don't really like Radeon. If we take a look, right, I'm going to zoom out, and I know the map is a little bit dark, uh, but what you'll notice is this is a really big four-player map, and the biggest thing about it is this center, right? So the center is super, super wide open. You only have here, 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 and here with any terrain challenges, right? So because there's not much terrain in the center, it's super wide open, Protoss can really move around here and find good angles. So <clears throat> it can be a little hard to push across. It generally favors big, big macro games. Like we see a lot of uh, games here where it goes really late, max out armies and all that. And that's definitely where Gypsy, I think, uh, probably excels. Uh, quite a bit. He's very good at that late game macro at really producing nonstop, getting his expansions up as quickly as possible. Maybe that's why he chose it. Uh, I, I find it to be a pretty comfortable map. Uh, pretty easy to take the third and everything. But yeah, again, some, some Terrans, not a uh, huge fan of it. Boa, I think it'll fit him just fine. Like he's pretty darn good in the bigger macro games too. Uh, but generally the mid game, I think is where Boa really shines. He'll put a little bit of pressure on you early sometimes and then really big pressure later on. Now, notice the probe is scouting a lot earlier this game. If you recall, before he went right up to Dragoon before really scouting. Here he's scouting right away, also going second pylon uh, before the gas. So we are definitely going to see at least one Zealot out of here. He might be trying to catch Gypsy doing a gasless expansion. And he would catch him if Gypsy wasn't scouting first against Boa. If Gypsy had scouted horizontally, Boa probably would have won this game. I just, I have to throw that out there. That's how powerful this build can be against what Gypsy's doing if you don't know it's coming. Now Gypsy gets in and he sees, oh, late gas, late core. This is Zealots, he'll add a second depot. He might even go the gas, but he might actually just rally Marines and put them in a bunker. I feel like here I'd put down gas as well, but uh, we'll see what, what Gypsy's overall plan is. He may just want to still power out that command center as quickly as possible. Now the first Zealot has been made. It's walking across the map. Probe up here, checking out that uh, Marine. Now, I don't think Boa will run past. <laughs> I don't think he'll run past the bunker with this cell up, but maybe. It's a possibility. Uh, he might wait for two and run past. That's a it's a little bit smarter uh, of, a, of a kind of cheesy play. So two Marines in that bunker, third Marine, fourth Marine on the way. And look, he did end up getting that gas as well. So he checks up and sees no command center. Now, this is, I think he knows that there's going to be a command center. I think he knows that he caught Gypsy trying to go gasless expansion. And for those of you who might not uh, be completely aware of, of what that is, basically, it's like if Terran skips gas and goes command center faster, uh, it can be very strong unless a quick zealot shows up at your base. And then it becomes very, very weak, depending on how quickly you made your command center. Uh, you know, sometimes, of course, you'll micro perfectly and get rid of that, and then it won't be bad. But, uh, yeah, it can it can get gross. So he's definitely uh, hindered the build of Gypsy some here. Let's take a look. The Nexus is not quite halfway. 
The command center is just over halfway. So the command center is still faster than the Nexus, which is good. That's high quality for Gypsy. Uh, and he has started his factory, but we have range on the way. So Boa is very likely to go across the map and pressure with a few Dragoons just on the bunker to make repair happen. And, you know, that, that can be really annoying. Not that repair costs a ton of minerals, but between the minerals it does cost, plus the lost mining time of the SCVs, which must be pulled, it's very annoying, and it really does hinder your build as Terran. If you don't have to repair anything as Terran, you just you feel fantastic. You get so many minerals. But generally, you will see that pressure. Now, well, the Dragoon walks up. It gets ready. Observe, or a, rather, a Robo on the way, as well as that second gateway. So pretty standard stuff. This game, I'm actually thinking we'll see Reaver before third base just based off the fact that it was such a fast command center. Because it was a fast command center, there's more probability for a timing attack to occur, right? Something from Gypsy that tries to put pressure onto Boa. So I feel like in that type of situation, maybe Boa will prefer to go for the quicker Reaver so that he has counterplay to any quick pressure as opposed to go for the quicker third base, which will give him a stronger mid game, right? I mean, there's always trade-offs no matter what you do except Nexus first cross spawn. There's no trade-offs there. Now, uh, two add-ons, so probably making multiple siege shanks here. I think what we'll see from Gypsy will be a two-factory, uh, three-tank push with speed and mines on the way, very likely. Really common uh, follow-up build to gasless expansion. <coughs> Missile turret on the way for safety. He'll probably... Not yet, but pretty soon. Throw down a couple more. Like a little bit after six minutes, you probably want to make two more turrets. One near your factories, one near your main command. And those three turrets will basically keep you alive against anything but snow. So right now, little rows of dragoons. You can see he's cutting off all scouting. These are the two ground paths that can get to his base. One dragoon here, three here. And it looks like he actually will go for the uh, third Nexus before that Reaver tech that I was talking about before. Now that's, it's fine, but this push is coming. Chipsy hasn't had to repair anything. I thought there was gonna be some pressure, but there wasn't. So this push is scary. He's got speed and mines very likely on the way. He's adding those additional missile turrets now in case Reaver flies in because he would have a Reaver right now. Uh, <coughs> the shuttle would be about here going across the map with a standard quick reaver build now look at how many goons he has he actually has quite a few and gypsy does not have the vulture count nor the mines to take care of that right now so boa's literally running past the marines as quickly as he can dragoons are faster than siege tanks so they are catching them but as the mines go up here's the thing observers are slower than goons so the observers fall behind and if you lay mines like this while you retreat it slows the goons notice the goons no longer can keep up with the siege tanks so you have to kind of wait for the observer to come up. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyways, he gets back. He saved his siege tanks. That's the important thing. I may He may have gotten a probe there. It looked like the probes ha weren't mining in the right configuration. Maybe he ran the vultures in and got a probe or something or a couple probes. I'm not 100% sure. Sorry, missed that. Anyways, three vultures running out for some harassment. Boa really on top of his Dragoon movement, realizing the third base is a likely area for some harass. So sends these two goons down. Uh-oh. Oh! That's a sick find by Gypsy. Gonna get about three probes right now. Really, really annoying to deal with. The rest of the Dragoons come back, so he will clear that. <clears throat> and he sees the shuttle. So at least he knows now it's not like Observer into Carrier, right? Like, that's... That was actually really valuable scouting intel. He's killed a lot of probes now. There is a third Nexus. But looking at Gypsy's uh, SCV count. Yeah, he's got like 48 SCVs or something like that. Like something crazy right now. That is a really, really healthy SCV count. <clears throat> now, adding the additional factories, he's actually going up to six fact. And that makes perfect sense. When you have saturation that looks like this, instead of five factor, you can actually go for six. Uh, and the six fact is going to be considerably stronger. Now, there is a world in which Gypsy will want to not attack with this. Notice Boa once again getting his Citadel up. He's adding those gateways. 
Gypsy's actually blocking off fourth base locations with his vultures, which uh, is good. It's good generally. I think uh, if he's going to attack, he might actually want Boa to make that nexus. But yeah, I think this attack from Gypsy has a very good chance of working. If you look at what's happened so far this game, uh, he did end up killing some probes and like kind of slowing down the base slightly. Uh, he only lost some vultures in the early game, didn't lose any of his siege tanks, so that's pretty good. His original command center was faster than Boa's original Nexus, so it just kind of shows you that he's been very on top of his macro. Look at this, 100 supply to 104. That's a very good sign for Terran. If Terran is near Protoss supply, it's generally Terran advantage. Now looking over at Boa's base... Yeah, he's adding his extra gates now. So you can see these gates are like slightly later than what we saw in the previous game, but he's adding more. So he realizes that it's very likely that this is an incredibly strong attack coming. So he's going up to eight gates. He's fixed his economy, all the problems that happened with the harassment. He's basically fixed that. He's adding the gates. Yeah, maybe they're just slightly later. But once he gets like two rounds out of everything. So basically, guys, in about two minutes, he's going to have so many zealots. It's going to blow your mind. Now, Gypsy's getting ready to attack. He needs to nail his depots during this time. Six Factory is no joke on depot production. You have to cut all your SCV production and just really work hard on... Oh my god, he catches the shuttle this early? That's huge for Gypsy. That is, that is huge that he got rid of that immediately. And now Gypsy just running across the map. He got rid of 10 supply there. Another shuttle comes up. Oh my god. Oof. Big, big oof there. Uh, now, Siege Shanks come up. And, well, he's got some speed zealots here. We don't have those reinforcements yet. It looks like the rally was maybe set there instead of forward. And he is being broken a little bit. Damn, man. Gypsy has to pull back and expand, I think. I don't think he can quite break it. Enough Dragoons left over. Like, if you end up killing all the Dragoons, then it becomes kind of easy. But the Dragoons here, just showing so much power. Chasing these down, picking some off. As a Siege, he might back up. I don't think he'll he'll force into this. Like, he could have maybe killed the Goliaths and, like, two tanks. But, yeah, waiting for those Zealots to come up and tank those hits. Lots of Vultures come out. He needs to target these Siege Shanks on the Dragoons. This is absolutely crucial that the Siege Shanks are not clearing Zealots right now. Unfortunately, one did there. The other two walked in front, so Boa got another pick. But he is losing a lot of those Dragoons, which are important. He is going to have to replace those. Vulture's running past right now. He's looking to see if there's any sort of counterplay. Throws down a few mines. Only one Dragoon sitting back here. Oh my god, only one goon up here. If he can blow up this goon with a mine real quick, he can actually kill a lot of probes. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to blow it up. But this is going to be a little bit too slow, unfortunately. He's not going to get the, the probes that he wanted to get there. Ooh, very good mine. Uh, but yeah, not as much harassment as he was hoping for. Maybe there still is some, actually. He's bringing more, more down. By the way, during all this, he set up a third base. This is why Gypsy is the strongest uh, Terran. Like, this is amazing that he has this up and mining while we're watching all of his harassment. Really, really fantastically done. Uh, the fact that his push died like that and he's still in this position. Look at that. He deals damage over here. Boa's re-getting goons. And he doesn't have a fourth Nexus. He does not have a fourth Nexus. Incredibly strong play from Gypsy. Incredibly strong. So a seventh factory coming up, getting the starport so that he can go forward in his upgrades with a science facility. Still rotating vultures around. And as long as he masses up tanks and kind of builds turrets here and there, it's, it's Gypsy's advantage, like for sure right now. Reaver's going to do a good job defending against those vaults. Oh man, what a scarab. Still on eight gates. Oh, double robo. I hadn't realized that he was going for double robo this game. So this is a this is a newer type of strategy. Uh, well, I say newer. This is... We saw this starting to pop up like three years ago. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that is new for a 26-year-old game. Uh, double robo is lots of speed shuttles. Uh, you know, utilizing Reavers as well, Observers as well, of course. But really, it has to do with bombing around with a ton of speed shuttles. It's a very battle-centric style. You're going to get Psystorm with it as well. We can see the Templar Archives. 
So definitely going to be going for that Psy Storm. And yeah, that's uh, that's going to be very strong for him. Now, Gypsy, here, here is where Boa could win the game quickly versus who knows what happens, okay? If Gypsy tries to do some sort of timing attack from here, right? Let's say he maxes out and tries to attack. This composition with the mass speed shuttles, because it's bombing out zealots on your army and it's dropping out Psy Storms all over the place, it's incredibly hard to attack this. So if Boa is sitting out like in a big arc and he's got his speed shuttles ready and he's got his high Templars hotkeyed and everything, to actually attack is very, very difficult. So sometimes you'll see Terran attack because they're ahead because Gypsy is in a good position here. But if he attacks, he might lose that position to quality size storms and good zealot bombs and, th you know, stuff like that. And like I said before, the center of the map is very wide open. So Boa will be able to find the right angles where he has a lot of surface area to attack in. So what I'm, what I'm suggesting here is like that is how Boa suddenly goes from behind in this game. Because right now I would consider him behind. Not a ton, but a bit. You go from behind to well ahead or maybe even win if he really routes the army. For Gypsy's sake, he's got to make a choice, and he made it right here, command center. When Protoss goes for that fifth nexus, and you have three base, so basically, Terran being down one base is fine. And when you get down two bases, that's when you need to worry. So when it's three base and your opponent's four, you're like, okay, we can both macro up here and just see how it goes. When that fifth nexus gets started, you have to decide, am I going to attack? Or am I going to expand? Gypsy has decided to expand. He's going to come out here, build a few missile turrets, spread his tanks really well. He, honestly, he needs his Goliaths up here. Man, he needs to get those down there immediately. If Bo was, like, in position here, he could have killed this. If his whole army... See? Look at this. Isn't that crazy? Five speed shuttles. But he's got actually a big army. I think he didn't expect Gypsy to even move yet. I didn't either, honestly. But um, Gypsy gets into position, and he's going to be in position with his mines and everything before Boa, uh, you know, gets up here. By the way, you can see him utilizing some of these terrain features. Here's a wall. Here's a little doodad. Kind of zoned on this side with the anti-air, laying a bunch of mines in front, trying to make this area as hard to attack in as possible. Boa right now. Okay, they're both maxed out. Checking upgrades 1-0 against 1-1. Speed shuttle's looking for a different angle. Oh, the vultures running down here. Now, this is a lot of vultures to utilize here, which can be okay. Like, you can trade out vultures against this comp. Uh, <clears throat> and, yeah, they're not going to be able to do too, too much there, but he is kind of forcing Boa around. And as you're maxed out, by the way, when you're playing against a composition like this, oh, God, this is dangerous as hell. He's got to be really careful about this. Boa actually getting up. And losing a few units there. Like, his army was not fully together. He has a lot of units spread around the map in different locations. You do not want to engage with a small portion of your army here. Whew. Kind of a... It is, this is like a really tension-filled game. What I was saying before about rotating those vultures around and losing some, it's good to lose some. Gypsy's economy is getting really big. He wants to fill in his supply with more siege tanks, goliaths, and uh, science vessels. Primarily siege tanks... Uh, and vultures are really good, and you always want to have some vultures. Mines are important. The speed is important. The concussive damage is important. But it's not as high quality a unit. Like, if you could be maxed out and it was pure siege tank and just some anti-air, that would be the best army, right? <clears throat> Even though vultures are amazing, you want to trade in for siege tanks. Now, he's rotating down here. Notice he's staying behind this, building a turret in the center. Really important, taking a look at where he's setting up. He's not just going through the center. He's going down here, utilizing this terrain. Dude, this is a strong push. Holy shit. Look at this push from Gypsy coming up. Boa having a bit of a hard time. Sieges at this third base. The third base is probably doomed. I don't think you try to save that. I think as Boa, what he should be thinking about is clearing these mines so he can come up here and attack elsewhere. But actually, he gets in here with his five shuttles. So he's definitely going to hurt the economy, but he's not going to be able to like kill the command center or anything. In the meantime, he's definitely going to lose this. Boa bring in some army. Ooh, that's a really high quality size storm. Just erases those Goliaths. Gonna erase some of these tanks as well. 
and he pushes it back far enough that he buys time on this nexus so that is that is pretty good that is pretty high quality i still think he's gonna lose that all there but you know this annoying stuff happened he has to deal with that boa did get out with the shuttles they're over on the left side of the map coming back for some reinforcements he's added gateways over here as well so he can rally out flanks from a different base kind of a crazy game here really excellent one gypsy continuing to move forward got those science vessels in the front not a lot of anti-air in fact none dude this is gonna hurt okay he bombs out the reavers first oh that size storm ridiculous ridiculous size storm does gypsy actually have enough to hold this off another great size storm but it actually hits all his shuttles no boa you storm your own shuttles oh my god uh, the Zealot's having a hard time catching these Siege Shanks. If he can save all these, he's still okay. Oh, man. It's been a long time not mining this base. Uh, he, oh, I thought that was going to be an SCV. He actually needs to think about taking another base as well, which is it's hard to do in these situations, right? You're microing so many things. You're trying to clean up this base and get it mi uh, mining again. You're trying to micro and save your army. You're trying to reinforce. You're macroing up out of your factories. It's really, really hard stuff, but... Uh, it would be really good if he had started a fourth base sometime during there, but his money is low, partially because of the harassment we saw in this base. Now, the shuttle's coming out again. Don't forget, these took a big size storm to the face. No anti-air in here, though. No anti-air still, so he's just going to have to be careful. You want to make sure that your seed shanks don't blow up your army if they drop zealots on it. Now, here Boa goes. This army from Boa cannot stand up against this, no matter what comes out of these shuttles. The amount of siege tanks is absolutely overwhelming. He's got two, two upgrades on there as well. Oh my God. Great side storms and a flank coming out of the base on the other side. That's a beautiful storm there. Boa actually does way better than I thought he would. Dude, getting this down to eight tanks, a vulture and a vessel. I actually thought he was just going to get wrecked there, but that little flank, the couple good side storms did a great job. He needs a lot more units down here. Now he's adding in a lot of Goliaths. This is... This is him saying, oh, crap, I don't have anti-air and just pump a bunch of Goliaths suddenly. But that means we have no vultures to lay spider mines with. So there is a little window here where maybe speed lots could help him to break through. By the way, I didn't even notice this Arbiter is being pr produced. So Whew. Boa's getting all the tools right now. But don't forget, his economy is not overwhelming as of yet. It's definitely very good, but it's not completely overwhelming. Now drops out on top of these tanks. An Archon comes out of there. The Dragoons that come out get smashed. Speed Zolot's running up. And like I said before, you know, this is a little bit of an issue that he doesn't have any Vultures with Spider Mines there. Now, an EMP goes off, but he does get the Stasis first. That Stasis is actually miraculous because he was going to lose both these Arbiters and the Shuttles to these Goliaths. They deal damage so quickly. Instead, this is going to be held. Okay. I got to take a breath. We got to figure out where we're actually at in this game. Okay. Gypsy's about to lose all this. He's not going to come down and try to save this. Best he can do is try to trade it well, right? He's laying a few mines. Is he going to come down and try to save that? It's about to unfreeze. He's not going to get there in time. He's trying. He's trying. Ooh. Dude, that's such a long spell. Seriously, though, it's just about to unfreeze. There we go. Okay, so he's actually going to do it. I can't believe he got his reinforcements there. I thought for sure that that was going to end. Uh, anyways, that's pretty strong that he got that back up. Because I was just going to jump around and try to figure out where we're at in this game. By the way, we just had speed shuttles run in here, drop off some zealots. So uh, not necessarily the end of the world. No no size storms on those SCVs. So he still has a decent SCV count. But slowing this base down. So what is Gypsy mining from? Nothing. Nothing getting very low he needs this base going and he did get a command center going up here so uh he needs to get scvs back at those bases asap <clears throat> i feel like right now if he can kill this nexus and get out with this army that maybe he can still do this right right now he's clearing this out i'm a little bit worried he's gonna lose that army like he's gonna kill the nexus for sure but Boa should come in with a flank and just kill this army. And if he kills this, this is a lot of Gypsy supply, right? That's 18 of his supply. He's at 128. <coughs> and this is like a lot of powerful units. Now, look, he's laying mines for his retreat. Really smart move. But don't forget, we do have this flanking army. We talked about this before with the gateways being made in that bottom left. 
All right, Boa running towards top left. Oh my God, this is so annoying as Terran. You see this? He's just going to try to get the command center. <laughs> that is so annoying. So what he's doing here, he'll run to the side and hope these units go up here and then he can hit the command center if it flies out, that type of thing. But it looks like Gypsy's dealing with it reasonably well. So right now, Boa has very healthy, very healthy, dead, gone, gone, more healthy than Gypsy's third, because for, don't forget, he took some damage over here. And Terrans saturate more heavily as well, uh, just because they get less spaces. So this command center is going to die. That little tactic he did, just right-clicking his army to the top left, ended up working out. That's a huge kill, because now Gypsy has this and almost out here. So he's going to go down to one mining base. Right now... Yeah, notice what Gypsy's doing, how he's taking real attention to detail here in splitting his tanks. He knows he has to, to <coughs> excuse me, he knows he has to take very good fights for the next few minutes here if he's going to win this game. All right, Boa getting in here so far. It's a very good fight for Gypsy. Ooh, that EMP was really, really good on the Arbiter. No spells come out. I don't know how much energy it actually had. Oh, God, Boa's getting on top of the tanks. I love the Reaver just sitting there out of range of anything. <laughs> and he's going to get that tank as well. Damn, man. Almost even gets the Science Vessel. And those few units from top left do come down, get that Science Vessel. Just going to help to deal some more damage here as well. Oh, I think Boa's done it. Yeah, GG. Boa goes up two to zero. I got to say, uh, I am just a little bit surprised uh, that... that Boa was able to win that game. Like, Gypsy definitely had an edge, and he played it really, really well, but you saw Boa knew exactly what he needed to do. He slowed down that economy elsewhere. Great job by Boa. Great job. That has to be frustrating for Gypsy because I felt like he played very well both games. First game, he kind of got caught, right, from the mass sellout. That's a very Boa thing to do. Uh, but his opener was really good. This game, everything was really good. That third base city up in mining, he got himself into a good spot, but... Man, if you don't really secure your fourth base, it's tough. So Gypsy has chosen the next map. We're going to go to a two-player map. It's going to be Blitz. <clears throat> Blitz Y. Blitz Y is a very cool two-player map. We'll talk about it when we get in it. And this could be the last game. I think Gypsy will take it. I think the game, the series will go on and on. Like, I putting this match together, I'm like, this is probably five games. Like, my thought process was like, I think it'll be five with Boa taking it, but who knows, right? Like, it, it could go either way. But right now, Boa on match point. He's up two to zero. Just waiting for him to join, and we'll get going. <clears throat> Hope that you guys are enjoying the Ursa Brawl. Once again, this is uh, sponsored by Ursa TV. Bruno, uh, the owner of Ursa TV. Uh, he's been doing a lot with StarCraft lately. Uh, he's hosted some Ursa Brawls with StarCraft 2 that have done really well. Uh, he's kind of been inspired by going to Home Story Cups and stuff. I actually met him on a plane ride to Toronto for DreamHack. So he's really kind of getting into it and looking to host some events. And uh, so a big cheers to him for setting this up. So we're going to do it. Here we go. Map number three going to be Blitz Y. Here we go. Top right, we have Boa. And in the bottom right, we have Gypsy. Okay. <clears throat> Blitz Y is an, an insane map. Uh, Boa, Boa banned out, um, Neo, Neo, uh, Dark Origin, which I found surprising because most people consider that pretty Protoss favored, but it's a two player map and he might just be afraid of Gypsy taking half map, right? So for instance, if you look at the game we just played on Radeon, 
if you have a game that gets towards that position on a two-player map, Terran will normally win because the two-player maps have less bases and they're thin in some way. They have like, they aren't as, they aren't 128 by 128. That's the way to put it. They are not 128 by 128. So being a smaller map, it just kind of ups Terran's power. Terran likes smaller maps, but they do not like two-player maps. And the reason for that is this guy. This probe is going to go down, steal Gypsy's gas, and then harass the shit out of his SCV that is building his barracks. It is going to be painful. Sees the barracks building. He doesn't have to steal gas for another 12 seconds. So he's he'll do it on time, though. He'll get up there. Watch, watch, watch. Boop. So he did that about about three to four seconds faster than the fastest gas that a Terran can build. So that's basically all you need to do, right? So by stealing this gas, Boa has dictated the flow of this game very, very heavily. He has a forward gate at his natural. What Boa will probably do is make Zealots while making a, a Nexus. This is a very annoying thing for Terran to deal with because the Zealots are much stronger than the Marines early on and they want to make the command center. But Gypsy didn't send an SCV, SCV for counterplay. And some of the common counterplay we see at high levels right now is if the probe comes into your base, either you send an SCV right before that or right after that, and you make an engineering bay at their natural so they can't put the Nexus down. Just an offensive engineering bay does a great job. So let's take a look. He's killing the gas with three SCVs. Marines coming out. Second Depot. Okay. The Second Depot was actually slightly late there, <clears throat> I think. Oh, no. He was still at, stayed at 18, so I guess not. Hmm. wonder how that happened. Anyways, he does throw down the offensive eBay. Probe going to come out and attack the SCV right away. The SCV is low on health, so this eBay won't do as well as it could do. Uh, we have the Zealot coming across the map. Gypsy just nonstop on these Marines at the moment. Now, three Marines with excellent micro can beat a Zealot. Uh, and the thing is, when more Zealots come, you have to be more careful. Now, uh, the the eBay gets killed off. That's why he uses the Zealot. And Gypsy knows now that he has a window. While that second Zealot that was helping to kill the eBay walks across the map, he has a window where his Marines win the fight. So he has to get his bunker up now. He's starting to mine gas. And he needs to get the command center as well. Now, is that a third Zealot? Zealot. Zealot, Zealot. Okay, so does Gypsy make... Yes, he's making a fifth Marine right now. And you can see that his command center is slowed because he started the fifth Marine, but he actually needs it because this is very common. It Like, the exact game you just saw has plays out a lot like this in the early game with slight differences, but they normally bring three Zealots and run them by the bunker because they just don't care. It takes 37 Marine hits to kill a Zealot. So they run by and then you just target everything down. Oh, bad AI from Boa. Holy crap. I don't know how that happened. Oh, he cancels his factory. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was that was a huge mistake from Gypsy to cancel his fact. I think he's a little bit unhappy right now. He will kill the... Uh, he Okay, he kills all of the Zalts taking no damage to his Marines. He has to counterattack, I think. I wouldn't blame him to pull his SCVs and go. Yeah, like I really, really, really think he should just... Oh, he is going. Okay, he's not pulling SCVs. Okay, he is pulling SCVs. This is the right play. Whether he wins or loses, this is the right play. We almost never see it go down like we just saw. So basically, Boa focused SCVs with his Zealots, which is really greedy. You're supposed to actually hurt the Marines. Uh, and if you hurt the Marines, you kind of force them back, and then you get an SCV. So you won't get as many SCVs, but you'll get maybe some and then also deal a lot of damage to the Marines. Here, there's no range on the Dragoon, so he gets up on top of this Dragoon. There's no vision of other minerals, so he can't drill these out. And now come the SCVs. He's making a bunker at that depot. I mean, at that at that gateway, rather. He's gonna need a second one, though. He actually needs a, deep, a, a bunker up here that can hit the Nexus. If he doesn't do that, it, this is gonna become a, a problem. Okay, he starts it. Perfect. Perfect play from Gypsy. This is exactly what he needs to do. Like 100% exactly. Now he needs to get in there. No, 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 no. Do not fight. Do not fight. You just have to get these bunkers up. 
Range is on the way, but range takes a long time. It takes over a minute to research. Oh, it gets stuck. So painful. So he's going to power down this gateway with SCVs. That's good. He wants his bunker uh, attacking the, the Nexus. So sometimes what you do is you put your SCVs on stuff to hurt them as well. Now, unfortunately, you can't target a bunker. So we do see some issues here. <coughs> he leaves four SCVs for repair. There's three Marines in this bunker. Oh, I like this. Dude, he brings his Dragoons up before the shield battery dies to target SVs. That was actually like a thousand IQ. It utilizes the shield battery before it's gone, but also makes the repair harder. He needs to bring SCVs back up if he wants to kill this Nexus. Oh man. He's just barely not gonna kill the Nexus. Okay, he's sending more, I think. No, those are going to the natural, I'm sorry. Oh man. That's that's pretty painful. If he gets the Nexus, he's suddenly in a good position. We'll take a look at this game, but I think Gypsy is now in a losing spot. Okay, let's try to count the probes. So we got about 12, 13. We've got 11, 12, so 15 plus 3. Uh, 28, 29 probes, somewhere in that range. 8. 10, 17, 21, 24. So Boa is slightly ahead in workers, okay? Gypsy's not dead, but he doesn't have anything going on. Uh, so he's a little bit behind in economy. He's only got one factory. His vulture's coming up. Oh, this is big. This is huge. How many can he get? Oh my God. Now, if he doesn't repair this, Boa will just win. Oh no. Oh, no. This is very bad that he lost the repair. Oh, my God. So he's trying to micro this because he needs the probe kills, but now Boa gets counter damage. This was not supposed to happen. Uh, there's little tricks with Dragoons that you can do where you stop attacking the bunker for a second while they're microing elsewhere, and then you get... Uh, then the bunker dies, basically. Now they get on top of the tank. He's going to kill the tank. The Vulture is still alive getting insane amounts of kills, though. Dude, this is absolute madness. This is this is crazy. Ten kills on this vulture. Okay, the goons are going to be taken out. And just now he gets back. Okay, where are we at probe-wise now? Five down there. That's eight. Sixteen. 21. So he's about 24 probes against, let's see, that's 7, 10, plus 8, plus 2, plus 6. Okay, so the worker count is similar right now, which is crazy. Like, those goons really did a lot, but there's a third nexus up for Boa. Now, in comes a Reaver. Oh, God. He doesn't have any anti-air against this Reaver. Armory is on the way. There is another few Dragoons coming up to the front. He's going to be able to get a pick on that tank. Oh, my God. Oh, this tank's going to die, too. I think Gypsy's going to GG. GG. And with that, Boa will be our champion here tonight of the first fight in the Ur Ursa Brawl. Um... Yeah, that was, uh, that was, it was kind of surprising. I felt like each game, Gypsy had a lead at one moment, and then Boa made good moves and came back. That last game specifically, targeting the SCVs, he left four SCVs because he knew he would have to fight against four ranged Dragoons for the amount of time it would take for the bunker to kill the Nexus. When Boa killed those SCVs, he made it because he saw the shield battery could heal his goons while killing the SCVs. So he made it a situation where Gypsy couldn't repair the bunker long enough to kill the Nexus. And then he did the good micro move at the bunker when the Vulture got by and was able to just kill everything. Uh, well done by Boa. He does take down Gypsy 3-0. to one, three to oh. It didn't feel like a 3-0. to oh. It was like some very close, very good games with uh, Gypsy winning in there as well. But what can you do?